Hi guys, Stuart here from Solid Tech. Just uh, wanted to run you through a little bit of how to create a plane through the center of gravity of a part. So I'm going to start off here drawing a little rectangle on uh, my top plane, as you can see. Um, just simply go for a corner rectangle just as a start point, just so you can see we've got something with some, some mass. We'll go straight to a, an extrusion, haven't even bothered with any dimensions on it. And we'll just shoot that up. So it's 45 millimeters high. Now I'm going to um, go and create a 3D sketch and I'll put a point in that 3D sketch so just somewhere not actually physically on the object. So there's my little point. I'll turn that point off and you'll see that we can just we can just move that point in 3D space. So I'm going to create some dimensions to that so we know where it is and I'm going to use the reference plane so I'll go from the front plane to that point so it's only a short distance and I'll just pop a value in, doesn't really matter what that is at this point. Um, so distance from there, I'm going to grab my right hand plane and get a distance to that position as well, I'll just make that 40. And I want a distance from the top plane as well so let's just grab the distance from there, we'll expand that so we can see the top plane up to our point and that's my final one which made that 20 as well so you can see there's a point in there in, in 3d space um, and the reality is that could have been drawn before our solid so it doesn't really matter where it is in the tree just to sort of clarify that i'm going to put a, a uh, couple of planes through that so we can see that we've got our reference planes um, starting out so i just want to go to reference geometry create a plane my first reference i'm going to use the front plane and I'll also pick that point so I get parallel to the front plane and instead of a distance it goes through that point that I've created so there's my first reference plane I'll give that a name so that we know what it is and let's just say that's the mid plane from the front so I'm just going to call it front dash mid so we know that's the mid plane heading back from the front now I'm going to create another plane so once again just go into my reference geometry create a plane and this time I want a plane that's uh, in a vertical sense but from the right hand side heading through that point. So that's kind of my center plane, I'll call that. So I'm just going to let it center. So we've got a couple of planes there, front sort of plane and, and a center plane. Now at the moment those are not really positioned anywhere particular. Um, they just use that point, that point was kind of some random dimensions. It doesn't really relate to the solid that I've got. So what I want to do is create um, some equations that drive that point so that it stays in the middle of my solid irrespective of how that solid changes. So if I double click on that on that um, 3D sketch I can see the dimensions there. So here's the dimension in the in the Z direction, here's the dimension in the in the X direction and here's the dimension in the Y direction. So there's the, the three sort of uh, dimensions that I need to control. Let's start out with the with the um, X direction. So if I double click on that I can use a drop down and say okay well let's add an equation. And so I want the position of that point to be something that relates to the, the x direction for the center of mass. So you'll notice this little drop down double, double arrows on the bottom <coughs> right hand corner of the add equation dialog box. That gives us access to a whole lot of things like SOLIDWORKS mass but also center of mass in the x direction. So I'll grab that value and we'll just go OK to that and it's found the center of mass there so that's cool that's what I was after so I'm just going to go OK. So now at least the center going in the X direction is correct let's look at the at the center so I'll double click on that so we can see the other ones let's look at the center in the Y direction so we'll double click on the Y and again use the drop down to add an equation brings up our add equation dialog box here it is again so again use the drop down but this time scroll down a bit and you'll see there's the center of mass in the, in the Y direction I'm just going to go OK to that. So I've got two centers. So I've got the X center and the, and the Y center correct at the moment. But now I need the, the one in Z as well. So I'm going to double click on this. And we need this last one. So we'll double click on that. So right, we need the, the value for the um, center in that direction because that's really probably the X and Z in this case are my most critical. It's, it's, this would be if I wanted to put a, a lifting eye or something directly above the center of mass. So I know I've got nice balance. So I'm going to add an equation and once again we'll say right let's uh, add an equation and it's worked so far 
pretty well, so there's no reason to think it wouldn't work well in, in this case again. And we go, oh, yep, I want this value, and you'll notice it's minus 30. So I'll click on there and just go, yep, that's what I'm after. And it throws me a little message that says you can't put a negative value in there okay, to drive equations. So what do we do? Well, in actual fact, what I should have done on all of them was just take the absolute value. So if we type ABS and then a bracket, and then go to the end of that in another bracket, and say we want the absolute value of that, then it's just looking at the number rather than the sense of the number. So in that way, and we could, could go back to these ones as well, and we could edit those equations and say, well, let's just edit that. And just to be on the safe side, just in case something was likely to change, or if ever it did change, if we just put absolute and then brackets behind that, then we know we're getting the correct value irrespective of the sense, okay? We might at one stage have to um, swap the dimension over to the other side of the center line, but the way we've created it, we put the point on the right side of where the mass was, was typically anyway. So um, that's just a safeguard, if you like, to make sure you're not gonna run into problems um, later on. So we'll just put those in. We've got the absolute values on all of them, so we go okay. So now I've got this, these planes in the center because my point is in the center of mass of the subject. We can check that. Let's do an evaluate and just do our mass properties. And sure enough, there's our, there's our centers. Okay, center of mass, 48.2, 22.5, and minus 30. And that's where my point is actually positioned at the moment. Now, the good thing about this is uh, it's going to work irrespective of your of your shape and how your, your um, part gets modified. So if we go and say, well, let's put a chamfer on this thing. So I want to just choose a couple of parameters. So I'm going to choose that back edge there and maybe this front edge here. So we'll pick those two and we'll put a big chamfer on those. Okay, so whack those up a bit. Go okay. And then we'll, um, I don't know, put a another, well, let's, let's just stick with the chamfer. Let's go for another chamfer on, uh, on these edges across here. Maybe we'll reduce that just a little bit. So we'll put one across there, one across there, one across there, and we'll go OK now. Because of that, we've changed the centre of mass of this thing. Uh, we might also go in and put another feature on there, maybe like, um, I don't know, punch a hole through somewhere. So let's just draw a circle. I'll go from the centre of there. Just use that shape and we'll just put a cut extrude. We'll just say, ah, through all. We'll go OK to that. So we've punched a hole through this. So the center of mass is, is not going to be correct anymore. We can check that. We'll just go evaluate, find the mass center, and you'll see we're at 53, 18, and 33 is where we're at. So if we just um, rebuild this thing, you'll see that the mid plane and the center plane have just moved. And we can just um, double click on that, and we should see that we're at 33, 18, and oh, 53, 18, and 33. So you can see that the, the center has updated, so it's moved that those planes into the right position. Therefore, if we've got planes there, it's pretty easy to go under there and say, okay, well, let's start a sketch on there. I'll just go normal to that plane. And we know if we build any sort of shape um, from there, so I'm just gonna use a, a straight slot. Um, it doesn't really matter if I use that point or not. I'm just gonna drag up there, give myself a little slot. So that's gonna be my, my little um, uh, lifting lug, if you like. So um, there's my my start point and I'll put a circle in the, in the center of that arc as well that's going to be the eye for my my little lifting lug and I'll make that into a little extrusion and we'll just do a little mid plane extrusion to keep it centered and we'll make it not quite 45 let's just make it uh, 10 mil and we'll go okay so we've just added a lifting lug through the center of mass of that thing using the planes that we determined so I um, hope that's useful for you because um, I get questions about that on a fairly regular basis about how to find the center, how to put a center of mass um, by actually locating something there and putting a plane through that point or something uh, so that you can use a lifting eye or lifting lugs. Um, that you might use that and then have two lifting lugs at equidistance um, to the sides of that so you know where they are. Um, but hopefully that'll help you with um, positioning some planes through the center of mass and getting a point on the center of mass that you can use for other things. Good luck with that and uh, we'll talk to you again later.